And so here we are. This is our big debut podcast episode. episode so exciting. Episode number one. <laughs> here we go. It, where it shall all begin. Remember when you were on the Wonder Years? Oh, yeah. oh, that was awesome. Did you ever find yourself in danger of being blinded by their teeth? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are the biggest gnashes I've ever come across. <laughs> yeah. Something tells me we should have hit stop four minutes ago. <laughs> I guess I don't, I don't get my nerd badge today. Guess not. <laughs> You're so smart. Thank you. <laughs> I am kind of smart. Host boy comes through with the lingo. Thanks for noticing, oh, guys. Thank you, smart guys. Um, Jeez. <laughs> you played Edmund in King Lear. I played Langford, the tour guide, in some forgotten 1776 piece of crap. <laughs> this is why I went first. And there's other things that weigh a lot. That yeah, they have, well, they have, they have all kinds of attachments. Yeah, eight to ten feet. Yeah, eight to ten feet, ladies. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, um, hey, but- ladies. <laughs> Consider this. They have a 15-pound brain controlling a 150-ton body. That makes no sense whatsoever. But I can relate to that because I think my own brain-to-body ratio is approximately <laughs> the same proportion. <laughs> you know, not for like the first time, Dan, I have thought to myself, I think maybe you're living in a different decade from the rest of us. <laughs> because... Oh, my God. Wait. Good news for you, though, female human. Mm-hmm. In the, in oh, the... I like that. That's going to be my nickname. <laughs> Good news for you, female human. And you were just saying to me, and I did you before you told me to shut up. Oh, we're gonna go there. Now I'm gonna start talking, and I want you to tell me to shut up so we can be even. Blah 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 blah. Shut blah. up. Thank you. We're even now. Okay, Tom. But you should have actually been saying something important <laughs> oh. rather than. I blah, finally blah, blah. discovered the shut meaning of what. Shut up, Dan. Okay, sorry. I mean, really. She didn't have to bring that up on the air. I no, was gonna be mum about it. I'm trying to keep it real. Who said that it, they would get rid of you? Well, the guy, well, Tom, Tom's point, which is probably pretty accurate, is if we took the show to a visual format, they'd be like, get rid of the guy and keep Olivia. And he's probably right. Well, it wouldn't be a show without both of us, though. We'd That's like, a mute point. We'd like to think that. But then they'd, then they'd offer you a big bunch of money and they'd bring in uh, Johnny Depp or something. You'd be like, nice, nice knowing you, Dan. No, <laughs> um, I'm so loyal. It's not even to be believed. Well, likewise. So I'm meant to be following the Hiroshima story and the guy getting shot. What do you got for us, Tom? Yeah, don't okay. bring it. Don't bring the energy down. <laughs> ah! I'm sorry. I just am noticing you. what you you're talking about pointing out as you're pointing again with your left I'm hand. I'm not pointing at you. <laughs> but it. But you. Yeah. You're my, very expressive. My Almost po- Italian today with your my hands. My pointing radius <laughs> this time is within my own personal space. Right. I was pointing at my laptop. I see. But just now, you guys had like this birth of man thing going on with the <laughs> right. You guys had this, this Michelangelo moment. See how you pointed at me? And I, I did, I didn't get and offended. I meant it. But at this time, this time, it was all about love. Snot rockets. What is a snot rocket? <laughs> Olivia has this thing where a lot of people I mention her name to, they can't say her name without including the word crush. There was a, a period of time where you were this big crush for all these guys. And so you were like, are we going to have any female listeners, Dan? Is this going to be? And so, hey, there's your proof. Oh, it's Half great. those responses Makes were. Makes me very happy. Well, I'll choose option C because I'm so freaking clever. <laughs> Play the game by the rules that are set, okay? All right. Um, uh, that's really all. Oh, you were fun with that. And the, you know, that, the, that is definitely I got piece. chills. No one's ever going to go, hey, Dan, you're such a blue whale. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, I would hope. Oh, uh, Dan, you're, you're such a blue whale. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It's tricky when it's a woman, because if you verbally attack her, you really look like a piece of shit. Um, <laughs> but, That's uh, the first time you've sworn on the show. For Well, first time that you may recall. I'm, well, I don't know. Maybe that made, made it on the recall. air. But I, I'm, I but I didn't really, because I'm quoting Travis. This is his words. Right. But it actually did come out of your mouth. Which I, is shocking, I do not Dan. deny it. It's oh. shocking. You're drunk right now, aren't you, Tom? Sober up, buddy. I was in Vegas once, and somehow or another, somebody dragged me to Chippendales. Don't ask me why. I allowed sure them to. they but dragged you there. No, no. It was really quite an experience. I'm the one that's drunk. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. Something seems a little different today. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Oh, I think I figured it out. We're 400 miles apart. We are Skyping for the first time ever. Matthew Broderick, Vincent D'Onofrio, Alan Thicke, Brent Spiner, Keanu Reeves, Brad Hall, Christian Slater, and 
Dan Miles. Well, they're all terribly handsome men. Oh, please. <laughs> My son was curious to know who you guys were. So before we got started, I, I showed him some pictures of Tom on Facebook. Yeah. And, um, you know, he didn't really react. He just looked, okay, that's Tom. Then I showed him some pictures of you, and he said, is that really what she looks like? <laughs> he, he didn't believe I really knew someone who looked like you. <laughs> he, he was skeptical. Like I, I, I thought, yeah, come on, what does she really look like? That can't be her. I'll tell you what would have been funny is if he had said, she's very expressive as well as very, very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> he had a one-word answer, answer. He said, Amsterdam. I'm wondering if, if amps are stuck into the world. I was trying to say answer and I said amps are. I thought you said Hamsterdam. Hamsterdam. Oh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> although I imagine that's that, another question well, it's a, another answer although I imagine there's somewhere in Amsterdam where you can probably get that service Amsterdam. performed <laughs> Tom didn't take us on that tangent as he did take us on the tangent clever clever work over there it's some uh, podcasting jujitsu is what I do beauty climate solitude all in one pineapple they got some pineapple and coconut up in there I've heard about that yeah. <laughs> did you say up in there well up in the state <laughs> You, I, I said that. I didn't think what you just thought. No, I didn't think what you thought that I just thought. You must have. Or you were you like, are <laughs> totally digressing down a path that is not not a good idea in Bombay, my friend. No. Moving right along. Well, this next person says he wants to time travel via GIF. What do you think about that, GIF? <laughs> He's trying to push your buttons over there. Uh, all up in there. Okay, let's see. Uh, all up. Did you just say all up I'm, in there? I did not. I don't know what you're talking about. What could where, you where, where, uh, where is this coming from, then? I don't know. The ghetto? Yeah. <laughs> in the ghetto when I was a little boy. Well, you made the sarcastic remark about them having pineapple in Hawaii. So I No, said, I just... I it said, happened yeah, to they, be something that when I went to Maui, I had never seen so much pineapple oh. in my life. It was well, just everywhere I looked. Well, they put pineapple and coconut and everything in Hawaii because that's was native to there. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, and oh. I love pineapple. And you can put it wherever you want, everybody. Okay, so next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last week we did a dance question, which was if you could live anywhere, where would you? And uh, we <laughs> we jawed on that for a good hour. Great question, Dan. Awesome job. <laughs> yeah, great question. He, as he says, I didn't even know who they were. The only reason I bought the cassette was because the cover looked cassette. cool. Damn, it was what? indeed a cassette. Wow, and it was Aerosmith's "Get a Grip." I think, honestly, I'm having a hard time remembering. <laughs> okay. Nice pause in between. All right, all right. I pulled think. the rug out from under us. During this period, I used to wear an in excess shirt all the time. <laughs> I got to meet John Cleese, one of my comedy idols, and he saw my shirt and asked what Inxus meant. <laughs> Excuse me, what does Inxus mean? <laughs> okay. Is that what, a type what? of cheese in Guatemala? Let's, let's role play this right now. Um, I told him In Excess was an Australian band. Without missing a beat, he said, Oh, no wonder, they can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> I said with only one hundredth of the comic timing that John Cleese undoubtedly had in that moment. My first album was Captain and Tennille. Oh, God. Sorry, Kira. <laughs> bought, <laughs> bought it, bought we it were, while we were... We're totally not laughing at you. We just... I just love that captain hat. <laughs> it was left in the back window of the car and warped like a clam in an old undersea B movie. Wait, oh, man. Which I, that, 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 I have to steal that. Whooped like a clam. That sounds like a B-52 song. Whoop like a clam and I'm running. Clam, clam, like a clam. like a clam. It's weird that you went to Fred and I went to Cindy. That was, that was, uh, know, that was. was an interesting moment there. Le disco. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting loopy. But Le disco. In this corner, we have a beaver. In this corner, we have a duck. Blend them together, and you get the platypus. The platypus okay. is where the lines intersect. That's what a Venn diagram right. is. Okay. So or on this side, in this circle, you have a guitar. In this circle, you have a keyboard. In the middle, you get a keytar. Ah, uh -huh. I see. I don't lie. Seriously, I'm not a dick, though. Um, you're not, but I thought you were. 
<laughs> okay. If you ask, does my ass look fat in this? I won't say yes, it's huge. I'll say, that's not the best I've ever seen your ass look, love. And help you find something that flatters that ass that I love. <laughs> and we may have spontaneous sex while you're between pants and or skirts. But ultimately, my point is that I don't want to be with someone that lies. I won't do it again. Kobayashi Maru is a word only Star Trek people know. The no-win scenario. Kobayashi Menu. I'm, I'm writing to trademark that right now. Kobayashi Menu is the name of my all Klingon tribute band. I think he's okay with sugarcoating the truth as long as the truth is under the sugar, I think. I've never heard it put that way before, Dan, about the idea of sugarcoating the truth, which is almost always used in a negative sense, you know? Right, right. The, the way you put it, well, well, the truth is in there. As long as the truth gets in there, that's enough. I'm like, right on. That's, that's actually not a bad way to look at that. All right, carry it's on. Right. It's on my Kobayashi menu. <laughs> it's right there it's right there on the dessert side sugar coated truth is on the Kobayashi menu nobody can take s- your sugar coated truth and your sugar coated ass nobody can say we're not having on fun over there. There. have some more cookies in the kitchen it was kind of off the cuff yeah definitely which is why I'm regretting that's right now oh I don't regret it that- hey I'll be honest I'm having more fun on this than I did with my where would you yeah, like to you, live yeah you're with? not on the hot seat that's part of the fun <laughs> Does that mean that ideas can't be cherished? And, and can't you like their dress and their ideas? Well, hopefully you do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully you've, you've got somebody who has a nice dress and some nice ideas. Um, Kevin is a drummer for the band Animotion. Cool. Do you like their music? Um, it, I missed that sort of era. But do you respect their music? I cherish it. You know, we were talking about... Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> Never mind. Come on in, all up in it. <laughs> we were just talking about her. <laughs> this is why. Good night, Olivia, everybody. This, this is why Olivia oh. episodes are the best episodes. All right, we're gonna go on. Yes, we, yes, we are. <laughs> What seemed like a simple question, Olivia, turned out to be a complex, time-consuming thought exercise that I was not ready for. Mm. At first, I thought simple, Mm. but... hmm. Nice sound Mm. effects. Mm. It depends on the woman. Oh, yes, it does. And you get an A for effort and um, an A-plus for passion about this subject matter. Leo Sidrin, (laughs) D-minus. Leo. (laughs) Oh, Leo. He knows what his girl wants because they've talked about it or she said so. Yeah. Leo, I don't know. Do you know? And he's married. Dude, do you know? <laughs> Leo, do you know where you're going to? Do you know the, the things, things that, that life, life is, is showing, showing you? you? And do you know your way to Santa? Where are you going to? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? No, I... Do uh, you care what you're searching for? <laughs> I feel the need to come to Leo's defense, and I think he was calling it out as a trick question, but in a really passive-aggressive way, which I kind of respect. Yeah. Well, let's think back. I but do I don't too. cherish. But when he answered my question, he said Barcelona. And then we got to this one. He's like, I don't know. Respect, Jerry. I'm done with this questionnaire. I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Leo's a solid dude. He has a great show. His podcast. He's a salad dude? He's a solid dude. Oh, not okay. a salad I was dude. just going to say, okay. You don't win friends with salad. Oh, you what? don't win friends with salad. Co- Kobe, Mash- Kobe Marashi menu's got to have that salad dude on there. Yeah, yeah. To go with the sugar-coated truth. All kinds of world building happening this week. Oh, yeah. All kinds. As I look at the written word, I-M-H-O, you put an A in the middle of that and you get, I'm a hoe. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's just being a dog. Hey, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying if you put an A all up in there. That's, hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, he's just all up in there. That's his problem today. Sorry, this is there's like a huge, another huge. This is, this is what you I call it. you guys. That's one of the reasons why I wasn't in the last two episodes. You moved um, to the airport? I moved to Burbank Airport. <laughs> That's some low fun. <laughs> and I'm here. loving it. You know, I never knew living inside an airport could be so much fun. She's out. She's live at baggage claim right now, everybody. I am. Lots of baggage. Does that song make you want to both rock and roll all night and party every day? Maybe every other day at this point in my life, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many hooks does that song have? Like seven? <laughs> that, that song has all the hooks. That song, that song is a bag of hooks, uh, all of which have already caught an earworm, and they're squirming into your head, and there's nothing you can do about it. You're just a little trivia buff there up in there. <laughs> all up in it.
You're all up in it with your trivia. <laughs> oh, it's made with Long John Baldwin and Nigel. <laughs> Are you mocking me? No, I think it's great. So, Olivia, did Sean Cassidy make you want to get down and get with it? Uh, no, not necessarily, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw Tom making faces, too. No, um, no. Please don't take it personally. We did not mean to just slay Sean Cassidy or rake him over the coals. I actually meant I'm to do sure that. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. Let's all apologize to Nikki. Olivia apologized. I apologize. Tom doesn't have to, but you can if you One, want to. One, two, three. Sorry. Sorry, oh, sorry. Nikki. Oh, sorry, Nikki. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Ayla. Unzip your jacket. I think. Go ahead. Well, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> People may not remember the purple jacket visually, but I'm sure they remember the zipping sound. Um, uh, let me, and, and, and in case they don't, let's give them another little shot at that, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Double dose. Ah, well, it's such a crisp, lovely sound. According to them, this so-called 100-pound rabbit weighed 22 pounds. Okay, so you're a little bit off there, hun. So, you know, before I could relay this information to her, unfriended, disowned, wiped from her electronic life forever. You know, it was like uh, she was so mad at me for for questioning if the rabbit weighed 100 pounds that she's just gone. Now, as I said, no big loss. I wasn't even sure who she was. But the reason I mentioned the story is because I never would have imagined I would ever lose a friend due to discrepancy over 78 pounds of rabbit meat. My God. And the main reason I told the story was I wanted to say 78 pounds of rabbit meat out loud. Uh, but I think if we just improvise the whole thing and say, whatever happens, happens, you know, that's what I think we should do. I think we're already <laughs> doing it. Yeah, we're, we're we doing are. it right now. And you're recording this right now? We're doing it right now. Oh, you're going to release this? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think we should do that. Yeah, no, once the red light comes on, dude, it's too late. Those other job interviews that you've been interviewing for that are similar to us, just, you know, you can just tell them that. No, 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 they're not. They're not similar to this. I get paid for these other things. Oh, ooh, snap! Did you hear that, Dan? That was hilarious. You, you, you haven't been, you haven't been getting those checks I've been mailing you. Oh my, I'm so sorry. I'll look into that right away. Checks? You know, okay, <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> Well, now I don't feel sorry for you because if people are going to send you payment and you're going to get an attitude about the form of payment, you deserve to be bored. And then as everybody knows, when Chris found out Olivia was going to be on the show, he was up at 3 a.m. because he wasn't going to miss that. There was actually a moment uh, where I don't remember exactly what it was, but it came after a, a flurry of comments and, and the, the Olivia was seemed to sort of just be hanging back, taking it in. And then there was this extended guffaw from Olivia, this long, long laugh at the end of which she said, this show is bloody mad, <laughs> which has been excerpted and will definitely be used in future Spoon promo. Can you feel the sense of excitement? In the I'm, air? I'm schwitzing. Good work. Bad work. So the name of... <laughs> nice, huh? Yeah. We consider ourselves an eclectic band, or as they said in the 70s, a band. Anyway. Yeah, I know. So yeah, yeah, it went over about as well in this room <laughs> as it did with, uh, with booking agents. ¿Quién es más macho? Pat Sajak or Ricardo Montalban? I forgot about that. <laughs> Aww. You know, start high, pitch down, and go up at the end. Aww. He says, any parent or elementary school teacher. <laughs> Why don't you just do that one more time, Dan, just for those who didn't quite get it the first two times. Ah, ah, ah. Why is it annoying uh, about that? No, ah. three. I just thought I only asked for three. Three Well, is I job. know, but Blaine says it annoys him, so I want to try and help support him and show how he could be annoyed. I think, I think by number three, we were already annoyed. Would you like me to do it 12 more times? No, I won't. No, that, I, I think we got the picture. I finally got my revenge because there was an episode where we were getting ready to record. This is our very first session, and um, Olivia was grabbing a snack. It was a Luna bar. And I said, well, that's cool. I, we don't, we, I didn't want to start until you're finished eating it. I don't want to eat on the microphone because it's a lot of people's you know, pet peeve. I don't want to hear it. And so what did Olivia do? She waits till we start. We start rolling, and we get, <laughs> I'm eating it. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm such a. Mischievous imp. 
I personally am very impressed, and I think that uh, you know you're uh, you're an inspiration to us all with your the taking on the uh, magnitude of technical responsibility here. We're talking about surprises. The surprises next week. You have to engineer the show. Yeah, right. No. Hey, you know I we'll, take, I, we'll be taking a long ass hiatus if that were the case. <laughs> well, I'm interested to know what our next song is. And I appreciate that lovely segue. <laughs> a mulatto, an albino, a mosquito, my libido, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just a genius delivery. My libido, yeah. <laughs> Are you saying I'm a hippie, Dan? No, I'm saying you've told me before I have a massage appointment, and and I just extracted from that that you. <laughs> I know, but I just love. I'm loving like the yoga theme and the. Well, you're like com- I know you like your yoga and your meditation. Do you live in a yurt? No, you use the term chakra all the time. We even we even pulled an oh. episode title out of that. So come on, who besides uh, you know uh, yoga doing hippies says chakra? Come on. Look, you know, I totally own the fact that I'm a hippie. I love it. Are you kidding me? The hippies are cool. Hippies are happy people. Ah. I feel so much better. I have to say, it's good. In fact, it's squack it good. <laughs> Is that the scale? Uh, how does that, wh- what's the context of the squack it scale? I just wanted to say the word squack it. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, squack it is always fun to say. Sure. I always thought the Sticks should tour with the Rolling Stones because they could call it the Sticks and Stones tour. But even a better one, I always thought that the Goo Goo Dolls should tour with Lady Gaga and call it the Goo Goo Gaga tour. (laughs) One thing I thought that was pretty funny, particularly for fans of our show, uh, when you arrived at Pepperdine, you know, the hostess who greeted you, she asked you about your memories of being on the show when you were a teenager. You mentioned, you know, Howard Cosell. You know, and then she kind of she kind of put her she kind of put her arm around you and kind of manhandled you like he had done. Like you know, in other words, I don't think Ken and I were the only ones who noticed the whole Cosell incident. I, I don't really even remember the the red carpet. I was just mm-hmm. hoping that I was going to be able to make it through the athletic part of it and and that I'd uh, not embarrass my team. Mm-hmm. We all agreed. I told you at the time you were a stud. <laughs> well, what do you mean by that? That's such a masculine term. What I mean is um, every event you competed in, you know, you did well. Like if you were running, you gained ground on your opponent. If you're swimming, you beat your opponent. If you're obstacle coursing, whatever you did, you know, you were, uh, okay, studly isn't the right word. No, I, I don't mind the studly thing. I just, I didn't know really how, no. I didn't know how to interpret it. But now that you describe it and you're as descriptive as you are, I think, Yes. That's suitable. Um, when I say stud, I don't mean, you know, masculine. I just mean like tough and physical and you, everybody was going, well, if I had to pick someone to swim on my team or run in my relay or do the obstacle course, I'd pick her too. And nobody even, <laughs> and, and nobody even knew you had a broken toe. <laughs> Did you disclose it to the producers? No, mm. I didn't. Jason and I spoke the next day. We're like, Dad! the hell i feel like i was we were both we were on the phone of each other going oh my god i can't move <laughs> <laughs> with reality tv one thing that i didn't know because i've never done it before is you've got a bloody camera basically up your bum the entire day yeah. i mean they just film everything they film everything that you say they they film you blowing your nose they film you literally like <laughs> At one stage, I had to go to the loo, and I had a camera guy follow me. I said, this is a timeout, okay, buddy? You got to stay outside. This is a boundary. (laughs) Am I going to get to the point where it's going to be too late to take a vacation so that I can't actually enjoy myself? Uh, And I can't, you know, walk the mountainous trail of Mount Titicaca or (laughs) wherever I've always wanted to go in, in, in Peru. You know, or see the animals in the Galapagos, you know, because they're extinct now. I mean, how long does one want to wait until you come to that epiphany? Maybe new things like have you ever been scuba diving and seen the most amazing colors in your life of, you know, electric blues and violets and hot pinks and oranges and yellows and you know, there's just so many things to still discover in life until you take your last breath, I believe. And I think, you know, we have to go out and we have to seek them and have the reciprocation of that. I really like that. I'm impressed by your pronunciation of reciprocation. 
very good. Are you? And why is that? <laughs> I just, just like the way that came out. Um, yes, I know. <laughs> Happiness to me is being articulate. Being able to say big words and get them out properly. Happiness, <laughs> happiness to me is the listeners and Olivia doing all the heavy lifting on this episode. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm sweating over here. Jesus Christ. You like how I just went from being a prostitute to a full dancer. Um, but yeah, it's. <laughs> and then you're like, hey, I really like this poll. And I didn't know I could do, you know, cartwheels on it. But, you know, you suddenly. Yeah. Fi- it's all about the discovery. It's the process. Correct. Yes. We've solved it. We've solved happiness for everyone. Cracked it. That's right. Watson, we've cracked it. You have other roles coming up, and we'll find ways to uh, keep the podcast alive. Because you know what? Doing this podcast, I ain't going to lie to you. It makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy, too. That's just astounding to me that we've done that many episodes. I, I haven't been in all of them, but you have definitely been in them, and you've done an incredibly stellar job, and... It goes without saying, but I think it needs to be said that uh, you are really a, a master technician at this and, and you have so much uh, enthusiasm and clearly it makes you happy and it's so well thought out and constructed and um, you give it your all every single time. Well, I appreciate the compliment. I feel the same way about you. You're an awesome partner. I wouldn't really want to do the show with anybody else but you. So yeah, you're right. The chemistry in terms of what you bring and what I bring and what we end up smashing together and getting, you know, if you would have done that by yourself or I would have by myself, it would have been okay. But it's a combination of the two of us. So I don't think after 80 something episodes, I need to sell the listeners on the idea of us as a team. I think, I think we've arrived at that. Yes, most definitely. Uh, But one big difference between now and the early days of the show is now we're well aware that a lot of people are actually listening to us. You know, we're not just sending our clever witticisms into the void, so to speak. We have a lot of very interactive listeners, you know, who give us, you know, practically immediate feedback on every show. I have to say that personally, I've been very impressed with the quality of the people we've managed to attract to the show. Everyone's very cool. A lot of our listeners are exceptionally talented in their various fields of endeavor. Our listeners are highly intelligent. If it seems like I'm pandering here and, and kissing some derrieres, I'm, I mean that sincerely. Um, you know, the type of people are listening to the show. You guys are awesome. I'm proud of the community we're creating. And I get the sense that you guys, the listeners, are equally proud of what you're helping us create. Um, it's, a, it's immensely entertaining for me and just fun. You know, we talked about it, you know, this, this, this is supposed to be fun. I mean, it is fun because it's us sitting around as human beings, you know, being vocal about our opinions, how we show up in the world as who we are Mm -hmm. and, and be able to be discerning enough from, yeah, this is what we do. And, you know, we're musicians, we're actors, we're, we're, we're artists, but, but how do we feel about, um, you know, what we see out there and what are we more importantly passionate about that we want to come here into this little tribal circle that we've created to discuss and Mm -hmm. put out there. We're regurgitating out what, we see and take in every day and 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 i think that's really cool so it's so funny that we went from that to doing a show together um and uh i think it's going to be cool i'm looking forward to seeing where it all goes as am i oh the silence (laughs) and a chill came over the room without any misunderstanding let's tell everybody goodbye 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 Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. We will see you next week, everybody. Bye. See you next week. See you next week, you lefties. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of the show. Yeah. Ba- Olivia says goodbye and we're done. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Fare thee well. Till it meet again. See you next week. See you next week. Be a saint, would ya? What Dan is saying is it's on you to say goodbye. Bye-bye.